wouldn't believe how many bird feeders my grandmother has in her backyard. She's got me interested in bird watching. I like to buy her a new feeder every year for her birthday. I had no idea there are so many different varieties of feeders. Each attracts different kinds of birds. Every year we focus on feeding another species. This year it's the hummingbird. Oh look, here's a magazine featuring them. I think I'll buy her a copy. Look at all this bird food. Thistle corn, sunflower seeds, and this stuff isn't cheap. There's a bunch of wild sunflowers that grow up each summer behind the school. Maybe we should start our own business selling sunflower seeds. Sam's grandma could be our first customer. Hey, Mr. Moneybags, I can tell what you're thinking. Now before you start spending your fortune, help me pick out a feeder. Hold that thought. Will Sam's gift leave her grandmother's backyard humming? Or Josh's plan for sunflower seed sales for the birds? Join the knowledge seekers as they feed on sequence text structure in this episode of Thinking Aloud. As you know, authors select text structures for their writing depending on which will best convey the information they want to get across to their readers. Sequence text structure is used when the author wants to put events in order, such as describing a life cycle, telling about something in chronological order, or providing a set of steps or directions. Knowledge seekers are aware that authors use signal words, which can help to indicate to their readers the text structures being used. Signal words which identify sequence text structure include first, then, next, or finally. Authors also utilize time, days of the week, months, seasons, years, numbers, and even letters of the alphabet to signal the passage of time or order when sequencing. So this is a hummingbird feeder. How does the seed come out? You fill the feeder with liquid. Have you ever seen a hummingbird? Uh. You better listen to this. Life cycle of the North American ruby-throated hummingbird. The North American ruby-throated hummingbird is a tiny powerhouse of energy, beauty, and athletic ability. With its wings whirring, it is able to hover midair, fly backwards, sideways, and even upside down. The life cycle of this super pollinator begins in a soft, warm nest the size of a ping pong ball. First, the female hummingbird lays its eggs. The eggs are the size of a large pea and there are usually two, which hatch after 12 to 14 days. Once hatched, the penny-sized nestlings will spend about three weeks in the nest with their mother. They'll strengthen their wings for flight by flapping them quickly. Then, the fledgling hummingbirds leave the nest for short practice flights. Flying comes naturally for the hummingbird, but landing is trickier. The fledglings will remain in the area of the nest for up to 20 days. Because of its high metabolism, the young hummingbird's main drive is to lap nectar and eat small insects throughout the day. If a hummingbird survives the perils of its first year, the average lifespan is three to five years. There have been instances, however, of some hummingbirds living as long as 10 to 12 years. Hormonal changes triggered by decreasing seasonal sunlight cause them to migrate to Mexico and Central America for the winter. The following spring after hatching, hummingbirds are considered to be fully mature adults. They return to the U.S. to build their own nest just in time to find the flowers in full bloom. The life cycle begins again with the newly hatched hummingbird. Why don't we hover right here and examine how Sam slows down her thinking as she reads about hummingbirds and identifies sequence text structure. As I read the title and see the words life cycle, it confirms that I'm going to read and learn about a life cycle of the hummingbird. I see the word first, which signals this is going to be the first thing that happens. When I read that the female hummingbird lays her eggs and they hatch two weeks later, I think that makes sense. This is where the life cycle starts. I'm going to draw a cycle graphic organizer to record my thinking. It's like a circle that goes around and around. I read in another book that all animals go through a set of changes called a life cycle. First, they are born or they hatch from eggs. 
Then they grow and change into adults when they can have their own babies. A new life cycle begins when the baby is born or hatched from an egg. This is different from lifespan, which is the length of time an animal is alive. A line segment with a definite starting and stopping point best represents lifespan. Back to my cycle map. I create my first entry. Two pea-sized eggs are laid in a ping-pong-sized nest that hatch in 12 to 14 days. From the signal words once hatched, I understand that I'll read about the next event. The penny-sized nestlings spend three weeks in the nest with their mother. Then, the fledgling hummingbirds practice their flying, remaining near the nest for the next 20 days. The next major event in the life cycle of the hummingbird is its migration to Mexico in winter. I know that when an author uses a seasonal word such as winter, it provides me with information about when an event happens. From the signal words following spring after hatching, I understand when the adult hummingbirds return to build their own nests, the life cycle begins again with the newly hatched hummingbird. Seems like birds and bird seed have a lot in common. Both have life cycles. The sunflower seeds from last year's sunflowers germinate in the soil and spring up behind the school. As the plant grows, the seeds form in the flower throughout the summer. In the fall, the flowers dry and lose their seeds. And the cycle repeats next year. You'll build your empire one sunflower at a time. Come on, let's keep looking. Knowledge seekers like Sam and Josh always watch for sequence text structure. They identify signal words and key characteristics, and they create graphic organizers while they read. The learning cycle of the knowledge seeker never rests. Now, fly to the next episode of Thinking Aloud.